Well, g'day, curd nerds. Have you ever wondered what my nemesis cheese is? Well, I have to tell you that it is cottage cheese. And I've tried to make cottage cheese about three to four times now. And this time is no exception of the failures of the cottage cheese that I've made. I did manage to save it. It turned out to be a very good cream cheese. In fact, one of the finest and creamiest cream cheeses that I have ever made. And probably in part due to the process of cooking the curds very slightly um, as I stepped through the cottage cheese process that just didn't work. Anyway, let's go on and check out how I made yet another cottage cheese failure. I'm hoping to follow up with a cottage cheese success, um, but more on that at the end of the video. So the ingredients that I used in this effort were 4 litres or 4.23 quarts of whole cow's milk, about 3.4% fat, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture, I used the Mad Millie type mesophilic, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of liquid rennet in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water, and some non-iodized salt is optional. Now, the milk that I used was a newer brand that I hadn't used before, Riverina Dairy's um, homogenized and pasteurized milk. So I think that might have had something to do with it. Anyway, heat the milk to 22 degrees Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit. And it was getting a bit warm, so I took it off the pot. And then from there, just uh, make sure that there's no heat on at this stage. It's a fairly low temperature for making a cheese, I'll have to admit that. I was a bit surprised at the recipe when I first started to use it. I got it out of the uh, Ricky Carroll book, it was the large curd cottage cheese recipe. So add the calcium chloride solution up front to add a bit more soluble calcium into the milk so that it sets a proper curd. Well, that's the theory anyway. Um, I actually do think that this milk was probably ultra pasteurized, uh, even though it didn't say it on the label, um, because I cannot imagine why the things that happened, happened, um, if it was not ultra pasteurized. Anyway, I'm sprinkling the mesophilic starter culture over the top of the cheese, uh, the cheese <laughs> over the top of the milk um, and we're going to let that rehydrate so we're letting that rehydrate for five I think five minutes yes of course um, and uh, we'll put the lid on prevent any dust from going in there so just take that off and we'll stir the starter culture through the milk so a good stir there. Okay, now we're going to add just one tablespoon of the rennet solution to the milk. Now I think this certainly didn't help uh, with the curd that doesn't set, which you'll see soon enough. Um, yeah, anyway, so stir the rennet in there no more than one minute. And we're going to cover that up and uh, allow that to set and ripen at the same time. So that's going to take between 16 to 24 hours at 22 Celsius, 72 Fahrenheit. Mine certainly was that temperature most of the time. Many hours later. So the time elapsed. I checked the curd. I'm going to check for a clean break. Now, I did pat the top of it. I thought, oh, that doesn't look too bad. Um, but then I looked at the knife when it came out, and I thought, that's fairly sloppy. I don't think it would have mattered how long I waited for this curd to set. But anyway, I proceeded to cut it into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes using my trusty curd harp and then my curd knife for the vertical cuts. Now I could tell this was not any uh, ordinary sort of curd set. You can see by the sloppy trail that the curd harp left 
uh, for some indication there. Anyway, I let it heal for 10 minutes, just in case something miraculous happened. So 10 minutes later, uh, I get to heat it up now. So I've got the heat on. It's about 20 odd degrees there, Celsius. So it did stay fairly warm overnight. And here we go. This is the test. So I thought, oh, we'll get some cubes of curd and we seem to have on the top but as soon as we get down the bottom you'll notice that it is very very sloppy and it was this stage the uh, heckles <laughs> on the back of my neck uh, started to rise and I thought this is not curds this is slop and you can imagine my reaction from here anyway let's ask Captain Kirk <laughs> Rather dramatic, I know, but that's how I felt. So I continued on with the recipe and it stated that we heat the curds up to 43 Celsius, 110 Fahrenheit uh, over the course of about an hour. So just checking the temperature there, I think it's about 30 something, I can't really tell. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you can see there, not very good curd structure. It's very sloppy, um, very disappointing. But uh, I continue to heat it up, and you can see it just got sloppier and sloppier. Uh, now we're up to about 37, 38. A uh, little bit further to go to get to 43. I thought there might be some hope. There are some curds actually floating in the sloppy milk stuff there. Um, so I decided to keep going and we eventually got up to about 42 there we go so I was at this stage I decided well I'll cut my losses there's not much I can do with this um, this is not cottage cheese this is basically once again cream cheese so I turned the heat off now I have done some reading recently and it says that to make a good cream cheese you use homogenized milk so there's a surprise anyway so if it all goes to custard <laughs> pun intended, like mine, then uh, just ladle it into a butter muslin, which is the thicker form of cheesecloth. And just using a ladle there, if I poured it, it would fracture the curds even more, and you'll basically get nothing out of it, and it'll go straight through the cloth and down the drain. Anyway, so poured that in, and uh, let that rest for a little bit. So after about 10 minutes, I thought, well, this is not working. Nothing's draining through at all. So I decided to tie the corners of the cloth into a bag and let that hang for about 12 hours. And 12 hours just, was just right to, uh, to get the consistency I wanted for cream cheese. And I divided that up into 250 gram little tubs to give away to my friends. So you can store that at 4 degrees, 39 Fahrenheit. Anyway, here's a uh, lovely little ch take on cheesecake that my friend Mandy made um, and made a lovely dessert out of it. Anyway, back to Gav. So as you can agree, it turned out fairly well. We gave all the cottage cheese away, as you saw in the video. And uh, some people made some amazing stuff. Some people just ate it straight out of the tub uh, that I gave them. It was that delicious. I intentionally didn't salt it because I thought people might want to use it for uh, a dessert cream cheese instead of a savoury one. And I let them, told them how much salt to add to each individual container. So some people's failure are some people's success. And in the cheese making world, there are always failures. So don't be worried if this happens to you um, in any of the cheeses you make. It's not a big deal. We just get on and try again. Um, check out where we think we went wrong and where I think I went wrong was the uh, quality of the milk may not have been as good as I thought it may have been. Anyway, um, the curd fractured. Maybe I didn't use enough rennet. Anyway, I've got a different recipe for cottage cheese 
which I'll be trying in a couple of weeks time. Well thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.